we have someone who's gone through quite an entrepreneurial journey himself. Founded a company, had that company acquired. Founded a second company, scaled it to a unicorn. Ran for vice presidency. Started two other companies, had one of those companies acquired and is now back as the founder and CEO of Degreed, David Blake. So David's gonna come on and join us to talk about the digital transformation around workforce skills. Welcome, David. So Michael just did a pretty good job introducing me. This is now gonna feel especially redundant, but I'm gonna introduce myself, not once, not twice, but three times. And uh, not because ego, but because it serves a point here. So come with me now, hi. I'm David Blake. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from Brigham Young University. That's one. Hi, I'm David Blake. I am the founder and CEO of Degreed. And hi, I'm David Blake, and you can see some of the skills that I have developed as a ed tech entrepreneur. All right, so now why the three introductions? So we are just at the forefront of this huge radical shift into the world of skills. We're at everyone's kind of first wave of research. World Economic Forum has published on it, BCG has published on it, McKinsey has published on it, but everyone's just kind of at their first wave of research. And when McKinsey published their first piece of research, it blew me away. So when you look at these, I hope to no one's surprise at this point, but what the McKinsey research found, that is when looking at skills-based hiring, it was more than 3.5 times more effective than hiring based on academic credentials. So that didn't shock me. Any of you who know Laszlo Bloch's work, uh, academic credentials are not actually especially predictive of career success. But the one that blew me away is that skills-based hiring is more than 2x more predictive of career success than hiring based on work experience. Which right now, if, we were to go, if I were to apply to any one of your companies and go through the interview process, my guess is that everyone right now is hiring based on work experience. But of these three, skills. Skills is the most predictive way of hiring people uh, and getting them successful on the job. Skills has been my longtime passion. At Degreed, we say our mission is to jailbreak the degree. We have long called for and believed in a future where skills would be the currency, and that moment has kind of finally come to our doorstep. So I want to tell you a story, a story about steel and skills. So this is the story of a small manufacturer in Florida, Marlin Steel. And they have been published um, several times in the Washington Post as well as by um, others about the transformation that that company was able to go on because they went on this skills journey. So they created very low tech. You can see that's the actual photo. They created a skills matrix, which had across one axis of this spreadsheet that they put up on their cork board on the manufacturing floor, 135 skills. And on the other axis was all 39 employees. So when they started, Marlin Steel manufactured wire baskets, low intelligence steel manufacturing. They created the baskets that would go in bakeries for them to put their bread, put their rolls, in their display case. Low intelligence manufacturing. But when they launched this skills matrix, it was to transform the company and up-level their manufacturing. And so the employees were able to um, advance through each of those 135 skills. They were ranked from zero, one, two, three, or four. And every time that they up-leveled in one of those skills, they got a micro raise. They actually got paid more as they took as they leveled up in each of those skills. And so a little bit of that math, 135 skills, five levels, 39 employees, that's some 26,000 combinations. All right, we're gonna come back to that. You saw um, this slide in Michael Moe's presentation this morning. It is a reference to Thomas Friedman, who in his book, Thank You for Being Late, makes the um, case that 2007 is actually the year when those lines crossed. We now exist 
in a context which humanity has never existed in before. That is, the rate at which technology can scale has now outpaced the rate at which humanity can learn. What that means is we now exist in a world where the skills gap is only ever going to get bigger. Right now, with everything we have invented, we still have no expectation that the skills gap will ever close ever again. The skills gap is getting bigger every day, every week, every month, every year. That is our new reality. That is the context in which we are now operating. Now, there is a lot of pressure that that creates. The silver lining is that when you exist in this world, the premium on each and every skill is going up and up and up and up. So for any individual or organization that can get good at upskilling, the premium is going up. So the skills gap is coming at a real cost, 8.5 trillion annually at the moment, that will continue to go up as well. Now, that story from Marlon Steele, I've been telling that story, included in my book that got published, I don't know, six, seven years ago, I've been telling this story for like eight or nine years. That story is old, that is not a new story. But why is it that in 2024, still telling this coming up on decade old story of Marlon Steele? Well, because only companies at that scale have been able to go on a transformational skills journey to this point. And what does it come down to? It comes down to the math. When you look at that math, they had 39 employees. By the raise of hands, whose organization here has more than 39 employees? Come on. All right, most of you. Now, if you are operating at scale, up to this moment in time, you just have not been able. The technology had not yet unlocked our capability to see everyone's skills at scale. If you had 1,000 skills and 120,000 employees, that's 840 million combinations. We just haven't had the technology to inventory skill in real time, to inventory the skills of an organization, and to be able to make sense of it. But now, all of a sudden, we do. So in a world where the skills gap is getting bigger, where the pressures are increasing, where the costs are real, where the premium is ever growing, AI is unlocking our ability to step into a skills-based world. And I believe that this is a huge shift. I cannot state enough. Jobs have been the organizing unit of our careers, of our organizations, and of the economies of the world, and that is about to fall away. We are no longer going to organize the world based on jobs. We are moving to a world where we are organizing the world based on skill. The growing skills gap could become permanent as the labor shortage, LinkedIn execs, AI might be the solution. I believe it is. So what do all of these companies have in common? They have all ditched degree requirements in their hiring. There's now over 100 organizations, major organizations, that have dropped degree requirements from their hiring. So as an organization, how do you go on this journey into a skills-based organization, into the skills-based future? Well, um, AT&T, upskilling your workforce, start by measuring the skills you have now. So we believe that this is going to be a world of diverse data, of diverse solutioning. As you think about learning, it's a very diverse world. Articles do a different job than a podcast. Podcast does a different job than a conference. A conference does a different job than a course. A course does a different job than a degree. The world of skills is equally going to be vibrant, diverse, a lot of providers, a lot of technology, a lot of solutioning. You can think of the world of skills data in this pyramid. At the bottom is your high volume, low accuracy data. It has a place in the world. We shouldn't snicker at it. It's part of the pyramid. You all likely have a few hundred skills. Well, I can't assess you on hundreds of skills. There is a place for me to understand with low accuracy broadly what skills you have. But then as you come up the pyramid, there are needs where I do need to know your core skills, your 8, 10, 12, 14 core skills. And in moments of high stakes, hiring, promotion, otherwise, I might have need for really high veracity data, where I need it verified, where I need it assessed, where I need it certified, where I need it credentialed. So as you come up the pyramid, you get to your low volume, high accuracy skills data. So 
most organizations, if you rewind just one, two, three, four years ago, they had almost zero idea what skills existed inside of their organization. The most innovative companies had been using solutioning that was giving them some sense for the skills of some of the organization, but we are very quickly getting to a world where organizations are getting comprehensive maps of all of their skills inside of their organization. So the journey is start by getting that comprehensive data, then move up the pyramid, improve the quality of the data that you have, and then the third step is make this data actionable. What is that going to look like? I believe that this is a better future. The data is starting to play out. Skills-based organization, it is the better way. I really believe that there is no longer much room for debate as to whether or not this is our future and whether or not it is the better way. In a world where technology can scale faster than humans can learn and a skills gap is getting bigger every day, week, month, and year, the costs of which are high and the premium for skilling is ever increasing. It is a world that is driving all of the forces in this direction. I believe that this is going to happen very fast. I think the best analog we have is when social media came to corporate marketing. That was a scary moment that required massive transformation. There was a brief moment of real debate hold on, wait, we're going to let a 20-something be the face of the company on Twitter and say whatever they want? Hell no. There was a moment where there was resistance, but if you are Coca-Cola and you're having that debate and all of a sudden PepsiCo launches on Twitter, starts amassing followers, starts connecting with community, and you're Coca-Cola, you no longer have a choice you have to adapt or die. It's called the Red Queen's principle in biological evolution, and that is what is going to happen to organizations regarding skills. You might sit around and debate this for a moment, but as soon as your competitor moves to this model, they will be better than you. It is the better way. And as they start to advance and gain the benefits of operating in this model, you will be left behind, and you will be forced with the decision of adapt or die. This is going to come quickly, I believe in the next nine to 18 months. This isn't some far off change, the global economy is about to radically transform. In this future, you will learn based on your skills. In a world where we can infer and assess your skills, in real time, that is a better world. That is a world where you no longer have to go on the same up-skilling uh, journey as the person to your left or to your right. That is a world where we can see the skills gap that you have and be able to target our development exactly to you and to those gaps. This is a world where you will hire based on skills. McKinsey Research already proving that hiring based on skills is more predictive of success on the job than hiring based on work experience and way more effective than hiring based on academic credentials. I will give one um, sort of note here on India in particular. Corn Ferry data says that India is the only country left that has more people coming through its educational pipelines than it has of uh, skill demand, meaning India is the only country left in the world that is keeping up with its demand for skills. That is both good and bad. It's great news, great strong educational pipelines. It's bad because the rest of the world is evolving to um, hire based on skills while India is still in a world obsessed with credentials. If India is going to keep abreast with the rest of the world as they shift, born out of necessity, it will require that India evaluate its cultural sort of emphasis on academic credentials and move to this skills-based future. We will promote based on skills. In this future, you no longer have the subway maps 
of career ladders. I'm an X, I can become one of two things in time if I advance in my career. In this future, we can see every skill you have, we can show you every job inside of your organization, and we can show you the skill overlap that you have with every single job, giving you a targeted path to becoming whatever it is you want. And in this future, you will get paid based on skills. If I were to log into your payroll systems today, my guess is that 100% of you are paying people based on jobs. In this future, why should I get paid more or less if I have different skills than the person to my left or right? Just like Marlon Steele, this is a future where you will get paid based on skills. I believe in this future. I believe it is imminent. I believe it's going to come fast. I'm excited for it. Thank you all for sharing this vision with me today.